This video is dedicated to the basics of the GDScript language. That's the programming language that you are going to use in Goto to create your gameplay. I'm going to do two things in this video. First, I'll try to answer the most common questions or any concern you might have about the language itself. And then we'll look at a part of the syntax and point out some of the differences or similarities with Python along the way. If you prefer, you can skip ahead to the part where we look at the actual GDScript syntax. There's a link in the video description for that. So the first question you might have is, why is there a specific language at all? Why not use something that already exists like Python, Ruby, C Sharp, C++, whatnot? In the past, when Godot was still closed source, uh, apparently it had Lua and Python. This caused the developers a lot of trouble and they decided to make their own language. One thing is that traditional languages are not optimized for the needs of game developers. GDScript is optimized for code that runs all the time in a loop, unlike a more traditional application where you might re-render things only at certain points in time. In a game, you need to render 30 to 60 images per second, and GDScript is optimized for that. Having your own language allows you to add new features fast and to do that based on the very needs of your project. So GDScript can be extended with more functionality for game developers and it already has some built-in functionality for us. Like you can do vector calculation, work with matrices, you can store colors and variables and other things like these. GDScript is a dynamically typed language, meaning it's easy to learn and to use. You don't have to compile the program to run the code, so you can test your game at any time. It's also easy to read and to write, as you don't need as many lines of code as with a more complex language, uh, C++ for example. It's faster to add new behaviors to your uh, game characters or your environment, but also to navigate inside of existing scripts because they are fairly short. These advantages do come at cost. Some errors will only be detected while you are testing the game, and the performances of the language are lower than with a statically typed language like C, C++, Java, C Sharp. But you really don't have to worry about performances because all of the demanding aspects of the engine are written in C++. GDScript is only an extra layer for you to code your gameplay. So when you are making calculations with vectors, when you are calling built-in functions, in general, this is based on C++ code and this is very fast. On top of that, you can always use C++ code yourself for critical bits of code. If you have a very resource-intensive algorithm, for example, you can implement it in C++ and call it from GDScript. Let's talk about code editors right now, because you'll often see me working in Visual Studio Code, an open source, multi-platform code writing application. It doesn't have specific support for Godot right now. It only gives you syntax highlighting for GDScript. You can write code directly in Godot's built-in editor, and you will get hints in real time to help you find the methods you are looking for. You're going to get auto-completion, and also it will tell you about errors. Now, I prefer to use external editors like Atom or Visual Studio Code simply because they offer a much richer writing experience. So when you are working in VS Code, whenever you save, your changes will be reflected in Godot instantly and vice versa. So nothing prevents you from using both editors to your advantage. If you choose to go with Atom, which is another popular open source code editor, you will find some plugins that add GDScript support. So I'll leave the editor choice up to you because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter which tool you are using, you are just going to be writing code. For me, it's more comfortable to use Visual Studio Code, but pick whatever tool you feel most comfortable with. And if you have trouble setting up an external code editor, just stick to the one that's built in Godot for now. It's going to do the job really well. All right, now it's time to look at the basics of the syntax. So in the previous video, I said that GDScript is like Python. Here, we'll talk about both the syntax itself, but also the similarities and the differences there are with Python. 
If you still have little experience with computer programming, this tutorial might feel a bit abstract to you. But that's normal, and that's part of the learning process. We are studying a new language here after all. So even though the language itself is simple, with relatively few words and grammar rules, it's still completely new and foreign to us. So the way we do it in general in computer programming is that we start to look at the keywords and the structure of a script in order to get started writing code with that language. And that is partly due to the fact that if you have some experience programming, all of the concepts that you know translate very well into a new language. Variables are still variables, loops are still loops, you just write them a bit differently. Let's start with the basics, variables. On the left, you have Python, and on the right, you have some approximate equivalent in GDScript. And the first thing that you should notice is the presence of a keyword, var. This one is used to declare a variable. So for example, if I type var my var, I'm going to declare an empty variable. Then I can store a value inside of it at any point. So I can type my var and I'm going to assign it anything uh, 18.5 and it's going to create a floating point value. You have multiple types at your disposal and the basic ones that you have in pretty much every programming language, integer, and then if you add a dot, it becomes a floating point value. If you use quotes, you're going to create a string, so I can say hello. And uh, if you type null, this is going to create an empty variable. So uh, in conditions, which we'll look afterwards, if you do if my var and pass, this condition is false, okay? It's not going to work. Um, then you can use types like booleans, so you can type true or you can type false. Notice that it's different from Python. True and false don't have a capital letter at the start. And aside from that, you can do a few interesting things. First of all, you have access to vectors. So if you type vector2 or vector3, you can create a new vector. You are going to use parentheses and then you will type your values. So I can create a vector with a length of two in the x-axis and a height of five, the y-axis. All right, you can create a uh, vector three, which is going to be a 3D vector with um, the vector three constructor, open parentheses and use three different values separated by commas. You can create matrices as well We'll look at all of these types later on. You, you have some more uh, that are very specific to game development. So unlike in Python, you can define new constants with the CONST or const keyword. And for example, I'm going to create a constant called player speed. It's going to store the maximum speed for my player. I'll add a max in front of that. Using capital letters is um, a convention in Python whenever you want to declare something that's like a constant when you want to tell people, hey, don't change this variable's value. But in Godot, uh, if you try to set um, max player speed to something else, it's going to give you an error. So unlike a variable, you cannot change the value of a constant. It's something that you are just going to use to help yourself in your code. You're basically putting a name on a specific value to help you write code faster. And then you have containers. So containers are variables that can hold multiple values. You have two types in GDScript and you have arrays and dictionaries. Arrays are like lists in Python. You can put anything inside of them, like other arrays, dictionaries, integers, strings, booleans, made a mistake, float values, other strings, whatever. Okay, it all works. So it's just like in Python. And then dictionary are just key and value pairs. 
You can define dictionaries the same way you do in Python. So you use brackets and then inside of these you are going to write a string, put a colon, the corresponding value that's going to be attached to this key. And then a comma, the second value, maybe a comma, the third value. So I'm going to call it four in that case. For, and for the last one, you don't add any comma at the end. It's exactly the same in GDScript. I have one colon, it has a value of one, two has a value of two, three has a value of three, I have two commas, but nothing after the three. It's just going to be a closing bracket. You can also define dictionaries like in Lua in uh, GDScript. This is something that's not available in Python. So you're you are just going to use a name, an identifier, then put the equal sign and the value. So for example, one, two, and three here, it's ex going to be exactly the same dictionary as the first one. And then you have the ability to define new values that you are going to add to your dictionary. So first you can use a dot notation. You can do my dictionary dot four equals four. And this is exactly like adding a comma here and add an entry called four equals four or doing it right there at the top. Add a new string for the key and then I add the value for. So this line at the bottom is exactly the same thing. You can also do it like in Python. So you just put brackets and you put the key inside of it and with the equal sign you assign a value to that key. So for example, my dictionary open brackets five I quote that and then I say equals five, which is the equivalent of adding a comma here, writing five equals five. There you go. Conditions are fairly straightforward. So you can use the if keyword to check if a condition is true or false. You can use pass to temporarily uh, make your code error proof. So basically, uh, if you don't put anything in there and directly go to else, uh, Godot is going to give you an error. It's just like in Python, you can't have an empty block. So to make it correct, you have to use the pass keyword. Uh, you can also use pass inside of functions or classes that are empty. Um, then you can use elif, which is the shorthand for else if and you are going to uh, check for another condition. So elif some other thing is true and you can uh, run some other bit of code and in the end you can use the else keyword. If none of the conditions that you checked before are true, it's going to do something else right there at the end. Okay, now inside of conditions, you can check, uh, for example, to see if uh, something is equal to some other thing. So uh, five is equal to five. You're going to use two equal signs, just like in Python. So you can check if a variable is equal to something else. You have the and keyword if you want to check some other condition. Player is alive. For example, it's going to check if the player is alive variable has a value that's true. So if it's a positive value, if it's a string, something other than null, or instead of the and keyword, you can use or to check if the first condition or the second condition is true, in which case it's going to run the code in there. Okay. And then one thing that's interesting, if I define an array, and uh, I'm going to put two, three, four, three values in there. If my variable, which I'm going to define by the way, so var my var is going to be equal to three. And if I write if my var in array, Godot is going to take each and every one of the values inside of the array and check if my var is, equals to, is equal to them. So it's just like in Python. Here, my var has a value of three. So Godot is going to check, it's going to say, is 
2 equal to my var? No. Is 3 equal to my var? Yes. So this condition is true. So we run the do something function in that case. So you can use the in keyword to run through an array. Now we can talk about loops and you will find that in keyword we just saw once again. So you can use for loops to run through the content of an array or for a range, which is going to just create an array. All right. It's very similar to Python, which you can see on the left here. If I create a variable called y and give it values 1, 2, 3, 4, for example, this for loop is going to assign to x the value of each of the members of the y array. It's going to do something maybe with x, for example. Or I can simply use the print function, which is going to print the variable to the integrated console in Godot. And uh, it's going to print 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then you have the range function, just like in Python, which is going to create a list like this one. So if I use range um, 5, I'd say, I think it's going to create an array that starts with 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to go, at least in Python, it goes from 0 to the value you have in there, minus 1. You can also create a range like that. So you're going to define two values, three and six, and this range will have the values three, four, and five. You also have the ability to use the while keyword, and this one works a bit differently. You check for a condition, and while this condition is true, you keep looping over that code. So uh, in that case, I create a new variable called x, and give it a value of 0. And while x is lower than 10, I'm going to print x and add 1 to it. And here's the last thing we are going to look at in this video, and it's how to create functions. In Python, you use the keyword def. And in Godot, you are going to use the keyword func. And then you are going to give your function a name, do something, and you can write the parameters. So you can, yeah, I'm going to use parameter 1, parameter 2, and you can assign a value to them, like something. All right, you put a colon, so it's fairly similar to Python, and then you're going to write your code inside of the functions body. I wrote on purpose the if else a statement on a single line, which you have access to in Python which is very handy. It's a shorthand to assign a certain value to a variable if a condition is true, and otherwise you use another value. So it's a shorthand for if this is true, variable, um, I'm going to create the variable before that, so variable uh, test, okay. If something is true, the variable test is equal to value one, I'm going to use a string, else it's going to be set to value 2. All right, so this is what this line, parameter 1, is going to be uh, returned if it is set to something. Otherwise, we return a default parameter 2, whatever. It's just an example. You don't have that in GDScript. However, you can obviously return a value from a function with the return keyword just as well. You can also return multiple values, just like in Python, you are going to return an array instead of a single value, string or variable. All right, you can even return a dictionary if you want. And that said, we've taken a quick look at the basic syntax in uh, GDScript. So I really wanted us to go through that fairly quickly. So we have some basics and we are going to write code in practice to really better learn and understand all of those keywords because right now it's just the basics of the basics and it's still a bit abstract. But we're going to get started making actual stuff in the next few videos. So thank you for watching and see you then.